Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to the second lesson in algebraic expressions. In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to estimate a third. Probably the best way to learn how to estimate a third is to actually do an example. So we're going to go through an example and we're going to go through the steps. So a typical example would be work out without the use of a calculator between which two integers the root 13 lies. Okay, so step one. We need to find an integer that is a perfect square that is smaller than 13. So the next number that is smaller than 13 that is a perfect square in this case would be 9. Step 2, we need to find an integer that is a perfect square that is bigger than 13. So in that case we'd be looking at 16. So now we need to create an equality. We say, okay fine, we know that 13 lies between 16 and 9. Right, now let's carry on. So what we're going to do then is we square root all the integers. So we square root 9 and we square root 13, I mean square root 16, and we end up with 3 being root 13 be lying between somewhere between 3 and 4. So now that is what we're really talking about. We're saying where do we think that root 13 lies. So it lies somewhere between 3 and 4. And that is it. That's how easy this is. But now let's do some examples just to make sure you know how to do it. So let's look at the root 27. So root 27, do you agree again? Step one, what do we have to do? We have to find a square that is smaller than 27. Okay, because this is a square root. So if we think about it, okay, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. So do we agree that 25 is a perfect square that is smaller than 27? Now we need to find something that is bigger, perfect square that is bigger than 27. So if we think about it, we can see, well look, 6 squared is 36. So therefore, 36 will be on that side. So now we know that 27 lies between 25 and 26, but this isn't 27, this is root 27. So what do we have to do? We have to square root all of this. So we go square root 25 is going to be smaller than the square root of 27, which is going to be smaller than the square root of 36. Square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of, 20, of 36 we know is 6. So therefore we know that root 27 lies somewhere between the integers 5 and 6. Right, so that's not too bad. Let's try something slightly more complicated. Let's look at the cube root of 54. Now you need to understand that the bigger this number is, the cube or the fourth or the fifth, the bigger our gap is going to be. We're not going to be as accurate, but let's just try it. Okay, so we want a number cube that is smaller than 54 and a cube that's bigger than 54. So let's think about this, okay. 3 cubed equals 27, right? Everybody happy with that? What is 4 cubed? 4 cubed, I'm just going to dig my calculator out here, I think it's 64, but let's just check, 4 cubed, yes, I'm right, it's 64. So do you agree that 54 lies between 27 and 64. So therefore we know that this has to be 27 and this has to be 64. If we now cube root all three of them, which is what we're actually trying to find out, then we can see that the cube root of 54 lies somewhere between 4 and 3. Okay, so do you understand that this is actually very simple and it really doesn't matter what that number is, you just find whatever that root is or the power of. Right, I hope you now have learned how to estimate thirds and I hope that you will practice these and then do assessments at the end of the section. Thank you, great hands, have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.